Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about leprosy. And what is leprosy? You might have heard of leprosy from the Bible um, and outbreaks in the past and things such as that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what leprosy is. So the first thing that we're going to look at is what, what bacteria causes leprosy. Leprosy is caused by mycobacterium uh, leprae. Okay, so it's caused by mycobacterium leprae. If this might look familiar to some of you here, mycobacterium also causes tuberculosis. And as you know, tuberculosis is an infection of the lung. And what's in the lungs? Well, there's oxygen in the lungs. So this is what we know about mycobacterium leprae, is that it needs to be an oxygen. Also, the thing about mycobacterium is that it needs to be living inside of another cell. So it's aerobic. Right? In other words, it needs oxygen, and it's an intracellular obligate. Okay, and what we mean by that is that it has to live inside other cells, and, and we'll look at that in just a minute. So the first thing about mycobacterium, though, is that it, need, it needs to have cooler temperatures. So if we take a look, basically mycobacterium leprae likes to be in areas that are about 86 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, 30 degrees Celsius, give or take about five degrees on there, five or six degrees. So it's gonna like the cooler areas of the body, especially the skin. The other, and the nose, we'll get to that in just a minute. So the other thing about it is, is the mycobacterium cannot be grown in a lab. So it cannot be grown in a lab. So what they do, what scientists do, is they actually grow it in armadillos. And it's at, specifically, they grow this in nine band armadillos. Okay? And as you know, armadillos are found in Texas, so we've actually had outbreaks of um, leprosy in Texas before. The thing about leprosy mycobacterium, is first, it's able to survive phagocytosis. And let me explain how it does that. So let's say here's my macrophage. Here's a macrophage. And I have leprosy in the body. Now scientists aren't sure how someone actually gets leprosy. They're thinking that you have to be in close, intimate contact with somebody for a period of time. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Some people think you breathe it in. Some people think it gets in through cuts and things such as that. So here's what happens. Here comes my leprosy. And my macrophage here is going to eat my leprosy. So here's my macrophage. A macrophage, if you remember, is a big white blood cell. It stands for big eater. Right? It's a type of white blood cell that's going to eat things. So what's going to happen now is let's say this is my bacteria. By the way, and it's, it's a bacillus, so uh, leprosy is rod shape. My macrophage will actually form arms that will come around this and grab it. These are called pseudopods. And grab it and bring it into the cell. So once it's inside the cell, do you notice there's the membrane right here and this is membrane right here also? That's going to surround that. And this, is, this process is called endocytosis. And so what's going to happen now is my bacteria, once it's inside the cell, I want to go a little bit bigger than that. So my bacteria, once it's inside the cell, is going to be surrounded by what's the cell membrane as it came in. Okay, so now it comes inside the cell and it's in there. So what should happen now is we have something that is called a lysosome. So we'll say this is our lysosome right here. Lysosome actually contains chemicals that are responsible for breaking down the cell wall of bacteria that the macrophage has brought into the um, cell. So normally what this will do is it will come over to here and then normally what it will do is we'll attach onto here and then it has chemicals inside that it will release that will destroy that. Well, what the um, 
What the leprosy is able to do is it's able to prevent this lysosome from bonding onto this, onto this cell here, onto this uh, vesicle here. So if that can't bond on there, the leprosy is going to survive. It's going to start to reproduce inside the macrophage also. And we're going to see in a little bit about why that's important. Now, eventually what may happen is that you might actually get um, the leprosy to be released, okay? And here's what can happen. This is a nerve, okay? This is my multipolar nerve. This is my axon. And this is myelin. And if you recall, what happens with myelin is myelin is responsible for helping nerve impulses travel faster. And by the way, Mycobacterium leprae is the only bacteria that actually reproduces inside the peripheral nervous system. Well, you'll find other things may travel along in here. Um, especially viruses, but for the most part, mycobacterium leprae is the only one that will grow inside the peripheral nervous system. So again, this is the peripheral nervous system. So what's going to happen now is I may get my mycobacterium may break out of the macrophage or not, it could just go here anyways, and then it's going to get inside the peripheral nerves here. And what it can do once it's inside this myelin, and let me just mark down that this is myelin. What it can do is once it's inside the myelin, is it can cause a cell-mediated response. And what we mean by that is what's going to happen is now white blood cells are going to come over, such as uh, cytotoxic T cells and killer T cells, and they will try to attack this. And because it's inside a cell, they may actually start to kill the cell too. So what may happen now is as I get my white blood cells, it starts to attack this, causing something called demyelination. When the cells are demyelinated, they don't work properly anymore. And that can lead to different types of problems, such as um, a loss of sensation on the skin. Okay? So that's basically the way that this can work. This is the way that leprosy works. It can affect the nerves in this way, and then it can affect the skin by going through the macrophages. So let's take a look. And there's two types of leprosy. Okay, there's two types of leprosy. We have tuberculoid leprosy. Okay, and then we have the prominous leprosy. And here's the difference between the two. This is usually going to affect people with a healthy immune system. If they don't have a healthy immune system, what's gonna happen is then it's gonna go on and it's gonna become the promus leprosy and it's gonna to start to cause more problems. So on the tuberculoid, like we just saw, you can have a cell mediated response and put a stop to it in one area. What will happen in the tuberculoid leprosy is normally people will get a loss of sensation on the skin. So let's say this is somebody's hand right here. All right, there's somebody's hand. And then let's say the leprosy happens to be affected like right in here. For some reason it got into a cut or something right there. All right, so what I would get is basically a loss of sensation, maybe some discoloration and that area is usually going to be surrounded by nodules. The nodules are due to the bacteria multiplying inside macrophages that are in the skin. So in tuberculoid leprosy, basically this is what we get. We get a, an air, a patch or an area where there's a loss of sensation and we can have nodules around the skin. Now, nobody knows the, how the disease will progress. So you may have somebody who has a healthy immune system and they don't fight this off here and then it goes on to the lepromatous type. Let's talk about the lepromatous type. So we mentioned already, we mentioned already that 
we can affect the nerves, right? And that's what you just saw with the tuberculoid type. But then it could get to the skin, and we talked about the macrophages and how this grows in the macrophage. So I'm going to draw the macrophage again. All right, and then we got this. Okay, but now instead of my mycobacterium being killed, because remember it didn't, the lysosome wasn't able to attack, so it couldn't kill it. What's going to happen now is it'll start to multiply. If it does this in the skin, what's going to happen is it's going to cause basically papules or raised areas of uh, skin on the face. And sometimes it'll actually take on what they call a lion face appearance. Okay, so in the prometus, what's going to happen again is this will multiply inside of my uh, macrophage. And, that, and when, if it's in the skin, I start to get those papules of the type of bumps that you see on people who have leprosy. The other thing it can do is because it's affecting the nerves now in the skin and it likes to be in cooler areas, so it can be inside nasal passages, what it could start to do too is start to destroy the membranes around the face. And it's something called a lion face appearance. And I, I would draw it, but I can't, I can't draw that well. So that's another problem. And because it's affecting the nervous system too, it may cut uh, blood supply to the fingers and toes may get cut off, so you may lose fingers and toes. There will be necrosis first, where they turn black, and then they end up falling off. Because it's affecting nerves, the hand might actually start to claw, and it can cause a claw hand deformity. So you can see there's several different things that can happen with leprosy. Um, how do you get leprosy? Like I said, they don't know. But one of the things about leprosy is you do get nodules all over the body, like I said, and then these nodules will actually spill out an exudate, a fluid. All right, so they'll spill out an exudate, which we said is a fluid. And that they think that that might be some way of doing it. If you're close to somebody who has that, what will happen is the fluid will then get into a cut or something on a person, and they will then get the leprosy. Leprosy reproduces extremely slow. That's one of the slowest reproducing bacteria that there are. So it takes a long time for it to come on. Like I said, we don't know the progression of the disease. So you may have someone with a weak immune system who fights it off just fine. You may have somebody who's young and healthy, and for some reason it just continues to progress on from there. Okay, so for the most part, um, that's it for leprosy. We have the two types. The lepromatous is worse than the tuberculoid. We said it's caused by mycobacterium leprae, which, has to, which likes to live in other cells. And we can see here, it multiplied inside the macrophage. We looked at how it will um, multiply in the macrophage and cause the skin to roughen up and get the bumps. We looked at how the nerves can be attacked because it grows in the swan cells, which are inside the peripheral nervous system. And white blood cells then attack that, causing demyelination, which leads to problems such as the claw, claw hand deformity or necrosis or things such as that. So for the most part, that's it for our leprosy. And like I always say, I hope you enjoyed this video.